I am really excited today. One of the things that we all want to do is make that den in the universe. We want to get our message out. We want to attract the right clients, the right customers, serve them well, create value for them. And by doing that in our own enlightened self-interest, create tremendous value for ourselves as well. And this is what capitalism is all about. And I've got a fellow entrepreneur today who is just an amazing individual. And you're gonna love him because he's gone on a journey that many of us have done. He is one of those persistent entrepreneurs. He's out there making a difference and stuff happens. We all talk about, you know, nobody gets out of life unscarred and certainly no entrepreneur whatsoever has ever done that. But what we have is a remarkable in individual entrepreneur who with his persistency and really going through the market changes has identified his unique strength, his unique skill, where he's creating tremendous value in his market in each of these different markets. And he's gonna share with us when, you know, being persistent, but also knowing when to pivot and learning how you can leverage some of the digital marketing tools to attract even more clients. I mean, this is a two four, so you don't wanna miss this. Stay tuned, we'll be right there. Ordinary success? No way. You want amazing, remarkable, exceptional breakthroughs. Dig deep, think bold, drive hard, watch yourself soar beyond your dreams. AESNation.com. Thank you for joining us here. You know, it's, it's just an amazing opportunity. Uh, uh, you know, you and I have known each other through mastermind groups. We've done some car events together. We share some similar passions and vices along the way. But I want to share your message with uh, our audience. So first of all, thank you for joining us. John, thanks so much for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. And um, yes, we have certainly shared some fun and entertaining experiences together over the last couple of years. Well, this is so important. I want to give uh, Jason a shout out at Mastermind Talks is where we met and he just runs a phenomenal program. And, you know, not only the you know, the entrepreneurs, we want to help each other and really learn. And one of the things I've gotten to know you, Stephen, you know, you're, you are a resource to that group and to many others um, on you know, really being a persistent entrepreneur who's pivoted and who's made a difference and you know and really had that core strength of the digital marketing but what i want to do before we go too far is yeah you because know, i want to share the lessons that you've learned in your businesses and what's really worked for you and how many you know you've helped so many clients do this as well but you know how did you, you know, give us a little bit of this backstory <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, so if, if you really want to go back to the entrepreneur in me, when I was like 14 years old, I started a mobile car detailing business and where I would say, hey, I'll go, go to your house and detail your car. Well, I was 14. I couldn't drive. So luckily back then I was a cute yeah, kid. So I convinced people to drive their car to my house and leave it so that uh, yeah, that's an important part of mobile <laughs> there, you know, that yeah. branding. Yeah, so unfortunately, I kind of lost the cute kid piece, so I, I don't think I could pull that <laughs> off anymore. But, you know, that was really what kind of got me started, and I just knew it was so fun for me to be in control of my own income and kind of, you know, my own time. Like, I could work when I wanted to work, and I could work as hard as I wanted to work, and, and I saw a direct correlation to that reward. So, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time, but really like my first, I guess you would call real business where we had office space lease and employees and those types of things was a mortgage company uh, that started around 2005 and ended abruptly in 2008, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people listening and watching know it probably exactly why that was. So uh, we, me and a partner built up a mortgage company where we dealt with uh, higher net worth investors, so people that wanted to buy rental properties, which was a huge, you know, huge piece of uh, the mortgage industry back then. And you know, the company itself actually went really well. We grew it really quick. Um, that's where I learned digital marketing. I learned what SEO was. So I was gathering all these skills. Uh, but in 2008, when the market crashed, I also learned that business wasn't actually as easy as I thought it was. Because back then I was like, oh, like, what are people complaining about? This business stuff isn't hard. You just kind of open a door and build a website and 
you get business and people come to you and you have money. And I quickly realized that that wasn't truly the case long term. So I learned a lot about foresight and paying attention to what's coming down in the future from that mortgage company. Um, then I went on to start a uh, digital marketing agency in 2009. I ran that until 2014. And I sold that because I had a 50-50 partnership that we had different ideas of what you do when you become successful. Uh, mine was you work harder and you reinvest in the company. His was you don't do that. So I learned a lot of lessons about partnerships with that, how to, how to get out of them, how to get into them uh, the right way in the future. And so uh, sold that in 2014. Walked away the next day and said, all right, well, I, I have nothing. You know, I have, I have no company. Um, I can't take any of our existing employees. I can't take any clients. And so in 2014, I started my current digital marketing agency, uh, Sequest Digital Marketing, um, from just me with a phone and a computer again and going out and getting clients. And, you know, this will be our third, this will be this company's third year in business. Um, you know, we've grown, I don't know, like, 900 something percent over the last couple of years. We'll close about 18 employees right now uh, with some pretty big plans over the next couple of years. Yeah, no, it's, it, it is interesting because, you know, when you talk with, you know, friends who are entrepreneurs, we can relate really quickly that, you know, I do as a financial guy, I do remember 2008, 2009. It was fairly significant uh, in the financial market, real estate and financial. I mean, we're probably the two hardest hit. The, I think the only upturn was in the uh, bankruptcy type side. The, the bankruptcy <laughs> attorney friends that I had did well. Uh, but, you know, th this is, Stephen, one of the things that you know, I want to go into because, you know, this is none of us get out of life unscarred. You know, we get hit repeatedly uh, with, the, I always call it the two by, two by four effect. I mean, stuff happens you're going along you know you're really building a great business we're passionate about doing what we're doing each of the businesses you had you know you were passionate you're making a difference and then stuff happens and particularly when you have you know something like 2008 2009 the i mean, uh, our revenue went down 45 percent had i not been uh, a fairly you know affluent individual with easy access to capital uh, you know, it might have been different. You know, we wrote it through and the whole thing, but there was certainly no shortage of businesses that you know, went in a different direction. And, and even, you know, in our case, we, it, it got us, you know, it's kind of uh, into the digital marketing because prior to that, it was exclusive just corporate business where the big brokerage firms, the private banks were hiring us for consulting. And we said, no, let's work direct with advisors. We needed to communicate it. But Go, let's go to kind of a life lesson that you and I both have, but you know, you, you, you shared it here on yours, is persistency. H how do you, you know, how in the face when you're getting hit by two by fours, whether it's a 2008 downturn, whether it's a partner that you're not aligned, I mean, all of us, your fellow entrepreneurs, are either have gone through this or go, they're gonna go through this. Uh, there, there will be another downturn. As we're doing the recording, the stock market's up 250% since 2009, 16% almost annualized rate of return to stay in poor 500 dividend reinvested. You know, nothing goes straight up. So how do you deal with that when you do, you know, stuff happens? Yeah, I mean, it's taken me a decade to kind of figure out how to deal with this. And especially as I get older, um, there's more fear around that unknown a lot of times because, you know, I have less time to recover from it. And uh, so over the last really decade since this, since my mortgage company, once I made the decision that I am absolutely an entrepreneur, I just, I knew that I could never work for anybody else. I knew that this was my calling in life. I knew that I had something inside of me to help people. So once I made that decision, um, it really helped me get through those harder times by just saying, okay, well, this happened. What can I look back and learn from it? What could I have done differently, if anything, in that? And I'm learning these little lessons that I can take and move forward into the future. And since I'm already certain about my decision to be an entrepreneur, then I don't waver at all. And that's really helped me. Um, with my first business, when the mortgage company went under, I started having all these things of like, oh, maybe I should just get a job. That was really hard. Job seems easier. My family's telling me that. But once I really figured that out and made that decision, it was like, well, okay, 
I'm an entrepreneur. I've got to figure this out. Um, and, and just figure out what skills I learned that I can take into my next business. Uh, that was really helpful and kind of just my own personal driving why um, to help people achieve things that they never thought possible. Having that as my driving why has always pulled me through every sort of situation like that because I'm like, all right, well, what can I do now to help people achieve things that they never thought possible? And as soon as I start thinking down that path, it it's it's allowed me to just kind of pull through and not necess- and not focus on the negative and the you know all the crappy things that may have happened at that time. Yeah, no, it's I mean I think it's yeah, really words of wisdom, Stephen, because what what happens? I know in my own experience that you know I've had the two by fours. I think mine have been two by sixes sometimes, and you know the I think once you get that realization that you are an entrepreneur and and this. As you sell businesses, particularly if you have an earn out, you're staying. I, I remember, you know, I, I thought I had done a merger and it ended up, I wasn't clear who was in charge. And if you're not clear, then it's an acquisition. I just, and <laughs> so I stayed for two years and one day and the you know, first year was great after that. Nah. But it was um, very clear that, you know, I had 400 employees there. I was part of a very senior team. We were going public, all of that. And quite honestly, I hated my life. You know, I'm making a lot of money, but I hated my life. And so, you know, even in good times and bad times, we want to be clear on who we are, what we want, and be persistent to that, just as you have. Now, one of the things, though, you know, as we're persistent, we we tend to kind of uh, stuff happens. So we have to reinvent ourselves. And you know, we're in Silicon Valley. The operative word here is pivot. You know, type. And tell us about, you know, how, how do you reach that conclusion of, you know, the 2008 was kind of actually, I'm not, I think they just dropped the house on you. It wasn't a two by four, <laughs> but, you know, like with the partner, you know, you can kind of, you know, so many people, you know, uh, fellow entrepreneurs are kind of thinking they can muscle through it. And when, you know, you're not in alignment or the market's not aligned, how, how do you make that decision not to just, you know, be persistent, keep going, muscle through it, and actually pivot. Yeah, I mean, I learned, I learned a lot from the 2008 when, as you say, the house got dropped on me, which is pretty true. Um, I learned that I didn't pay close enough attention to what was coming in the future, and so I took that lesson into the partnership with my first digital marketing agency. And so, as soon as I started to see that not really working with and figuring out, okay, this is where I want to go. This is where he wants to go. I was like, all right, I should make a decision. Now, in hindsight, I still waited too long in that, but way shorter amount of time until I made the decision there. And really, I just asked myself the questions like, what do I want out of this? Where am I going? Where's the business going? And as soon as I recognized that there was a misalignment, I started having those really difficult, challenging conversations. And mm-hmm. um, I learned a lot about how to have those. I learned a lot about how to not have those <laughs> as well. But you know, now I'm more well prepared to make the next pivot, whatever that might possibly be. And I mean, for me, as most entrepreneurs, you know, we work really, really hard. And that's kind of this badge of honor thing of you know, how hard we work, how much we work. Um, how how forceful and persistent we are. But what I've kind of started to realize as I've aged a little more in the entrepreneurial world is that it should be actually pretty easy. You know, if we're in alignment with where we want to go and we're in alignment with our strengths, this business stuff should be relatively easy. And so as soon as it starts to become hard or something that I really hate, you know, like you were talking about uh, with that um, – acquisition, as soon as it becomes something that you just really don't like, you're, you're draining all of your energy and you're not using your strengths. Therefore, you're not adding the most value. Therefore, obviously you're not going to do a fantastic job. So as soon as something becomes hard for me or something that I just really don't like, as long as it's not a very, you know, I mean, maybe a week or two, that's acceptable. But you know, if it, if it starts going into months, something's got to change. And that's generally when I'll look at it and say, okay, cool. It's time to look around, take a good hard look around and say, what needs to change? What needs to pivot? Um, that's how I've done it. Yeah. And it's, this is one of the most difficult things, Stephen, I think is for all of us, because, you know, the, we were, 
you know, you're supposed to be strong guys or gals as entrepreneurs and that, you know, we can handle it. We're, you know, the leaders and so on. And there's sometimes when we're leading and the direction's wrong, <laughs> you know, and the market's telling us. And, you know, I've, I've had to reinvent myself and pivot and start different businesses over the years. And I got to tell you, the one thing I've always done is waited a little too long. I've shortened it, you know, as we go. <laughs> but still, you know, and this is something that, as you know, fellow entrepreneurs, we all have to work on because, and, and Stephen, I think you really said it well, because, you know, we can be in the moment and if it's really hard, you know, we want to double check and particularly we want to make sure we're aligned with our why, why we're doing this, but also kind of what the future is bringing because, you know, you, you really do want to ride trends. I mean, I'm not a very good surfer. I've tried it, but, I, you know, you got to go with the wave. Going against the wave is a bad thing. Skiing, I love. Skiing, you go downhill. You don't ski uphill type thing. It's a lot harder. And this is where, you know, taking that time is just so important. But one of the things that you did that I think, you know, I was actually surprised. I didn't know this. I, I knew your strength as a digital, digital marketer, and I know you know, in the conversations, you've given me some great advice and, you know, the fellow entrepreneurs and our mastermind group, you know, turn to you. But when I pulled up your website, I saw, oh, Stephen's really gotten focused on the niche side. And this is something I'm particularly uh, passionate about because, you know, it's just so tempting when we start thinking we're smart and we can tackle the world and do everything and, None of us like that idea of focusing on niches, but share how you you know d you know decided to do this, and, you know because you know everybody needs digital marketing. Why narrow yourself, and then uh, why you pick the particular group, and then really what that means to you? Yeah, I mean how how we picked a niche or how we decided to get niched within our industry was a very stressful decision because in my first digital agency. We were kind of, you know, we would serve anybody, anybody that needed SEO or social media or paid advertising online, we would serve them. And that, you know, that company grew pretty quickly. Fortunately, we were in a good time for digital marketing in, you know, 2009, 10. Um, but I noticed with our second company that we would do really, really well with some clients and some clients we would just do average with. And so took a step back and started talking to some of my mentors um, you know, with a lot of the great groups that we're in, some of them even together. And I talked to a buddy of mine that owns about a $25 million SEO agency in Ohio. And he, he kept telling me for months, he was like, dude, pick a niche. He's like, you know, we're doing 25 million and we're, we only really service three industries. And I was like, that's crazy talk. It, it, there's just not enough. Right. And as entrepreneurs, we generally hear it all the time, like pick a niche, focus on it. That's where the money is. I mean, look at everybody that we you know, that we share mastermind groups with, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, Joe Polish, I mean, Jason, all of these guys, they all picked a niche. And so finally I kind of recognized going back to what we just talked about pivoting. I recognized that it was becoming too, too difficult and it was causing me too much stress to not do it. So finally I just kind of let go and said, all right, we're going to niche. So we had a lot of people in the, um, in the home services industry, uh, like large, you know, five million to fifty, sixty million dollar plumbing, heating, air conditioning, those types of local service businesses, and so started talking to them and said, "Hey, you know, how can we add more value to you so that you would be willing to invest more in our relationship?" And we found a lot of opportunity left on the table. Became really good in that industry. Started solely marketing to that industry and a couple other local type businesses, and it just took off. I mean you know, revenue, <laughs> revenue was way up. Um, but probably the coolest thing was our ability to deliver really, really good results. So once we dialed our team in, we didn't have to worry about how to, you know, how to deliver results for uh, a restaurant or how to deliver results for an e-commerce website. Once we dialed in that, now we started to become the expert and, you know, now we don't even market that much people come to us because they know us as the expert. Well, and it's, you know, it's, as a matter of fact, I was thinking of somebody I can refer to you, and, and it's just that it would be good for your space. And it's, this is the fear that we all have, is that we don't, you know, we don't 
uh, want to miss out on any opportunities. But by the very nature, if you tell somebody you're in digital marketing or whatever niche you're in, or I mean mass market that you're in, what happens is you know there's there's really nothing special. But once we start specializing on a particular niche, not only is it easier to share that story with someone else that you know they kind of know where you fit and in addition as you said and i think this is so important your competitive advantage you get by understanding that market and really the unique needs and solutions and you can really deliver value against anybody who's a generalist it's not even it's not a fair competition at all and you know so want to encourage if if you're you're nicheless get a niche, you know, and put the flag in the ground, test it, the market will tell you. And, you know, and, and Stephen, did you consider multiple, you know, different niches along the way and this became clear or was this kind of like, this was the obvious one right away? This, um, so we kind of fell into this niche. I met a friend who runs a coaching program for that industry and so we became good friends and as he grew his business, we just naturally kind of grew along with him and then we became bigger in that space. So it was, it goes back to just being open to the opportunity, right? I mean, I, I met this person, actually he's in Joe's group and met him and uh, it was just open to the opportunity and didn't shut it out like I maybe would have four or five years ago. Right. And, and, and it just led into this. And, and now what we've learned from it is we say, okay, what skills are we amazing at? Like what are the things that we're really good at to service this exact niche client. And we have that list. And so we're already looking down the path of, uh, so 2018 will be solely focused on home service for all of our marketing efforts, but 2019 and 2020, we have those next industries already lined up. So later in 2018, we'll kind of start testing the waters a little bit to how do we talk to these industries? We'll go to a couple events. So now we're already prepping for those, those next niches down the road. Yeah, no, it's really powerful. Let's let's go for all the entrepreneurs. One of the things most of us are we, we you know, we're using almost everybody's using some type of digital marketing, but you know, kind of we have the fear of missing out. You know, we we know, I mean, I know, when I got a whole team doing this that we're we're not doing it as well as we could. And you know, there's kind of, you know, two groups. I mean, let's start with the organic, which is my favorite. I, I love organic, you know, and, you know, and, and how do we as entrepreneurs, I mean, how are you seeing, you know, digital marketing play out, you know, on the organic side? So organic is still really, really powerful. And if you, if you read anything about it, you see all these articles on SEO is dead and Google's getting rid, of or getting rid of organic traffic. It's just not true. Now, maybe it's true by the end of 2018 or 2019, who knows, but there's no reason not to be doing it right now because it does still work really well. And the interesting thing, we just uh, grouped up some of our clients and, and ran some test data just to kind of figure out, get a pulse on, okay, what is SEO or organic doing versus paid for our clients? And what we found is that um, so we put dollar per lead on all of our stuff for our clients because, you know, these guys want phone calls and, and uh, submission forms. So the an average paid lead for, let's say, an HVAC company, you know, a big uh, heating air conditioning company for paid is maybe about $75 a lead. Some are higher, some are lower. California, actually, you're pushing into like the 100 mark for one single lead. And on the organic side of things, we're getting like 15 to $25 per lead and the organic leads are driving more actual revenue. So the quality of the lead is better, the cost is lower, but it takes all this time investment to grow organic. So from an organic standpoint, if you're not doing it, you definitely should be. The things that you should be doing is, it's the age old stuff, putting out really good, putting out really good content, you know, potentially depending on where your business is and how important the organic could be, uh, you know, hiring an SEO company or hiring somebody that can do the technical aspects of it. Um, the things that we're seeing change in organic is it's not as important just to put out quantity of content. It's important to put out quality of content. So we've actually gone in and tested some of our old client sites where, you know, John, you probably know this or used to do it is, you know, you put out a bunch of blogs and you put out a bunch of content. Well, what we found is that when we went back and looked at old blogs, blogs that weren't getting any 
impressions. So they weren't showing up in search and they really weren't getting any traffic on the website. Mm -hmm. Those were actually starting to kind of hurt rankings. So we did some tests with some clients. We chopped off like 75%, I mean, hundreds of pages of really good quality content. We got rid of it and compiled it into more of a, uh, like a static long-term resource. And we started to see rankings go up. Um, so these technical aspects of organic are starting to become more important than just the the quantity of content that you're putting out, but putting out just really solid, good content that people are searching for is, is still primarily the way to go for organic. Yeah. We do a lot of research on this, Steven, and, um, I approach it a little bit different because I'm not the digital marketing expert, but we're looking at success and we look for, you know, what do people want to work with? And they want to work with experts and it's really the same thing. They want thought leaders, you know, no matter what industry you're in, they, you know, given the choice, particularly if you have some level of affluence and everybody's chasing, you know, people who can actually pay for this stuff and they want to work with the best. And, you know, at the higher and higher incomes, it becomes more discriminating. And, you know, this is where that power of digital marketing, the thought leadership, leveraging the SEO organic is just amazing. And, you know, and you can obviously distribute it through social media as well. And, you know, what I found interesting, because this has been our experience too, is, you know, the lead cost goes down dramatically on the organic side. But in, you know, for a long time, I just did organic. And then, you know, hanging out in the mastermind groups, like, you know, we're together. They said, you should pay for it too. I mean, it's not, even though, you know, if you have capacity, um, you should pay for it because, you know, that lead cost is still going to be lower. And, you know, what's working in paid traffic? Because you're doing both. Yeah, I mean, so uh, organic and paid are two parts of what should be an entire marketing strategy. So, you know, you should be doing both because not everybody goes down to organic and not everybody clicks on paid. So you should have both of those. Um, what's working in paid right now is, you know, Facebook is one of the more underpriced places of attention. So if you listen to any Gary Vaynerchuk, he talks about you know his day trading attention. So Facebook is definitely one of the great places to get paid traffic, but you have to think about it a little bit differently. Um, you know, It's not like Google AdWords where somebody goes to Google, searches for the exact thing they're looking for, and then you show up at the top for that exact thing with a perfect match ad. Social media, you're showing up in your ideal client's newsfeed, but they might not actually be looking for what it is that you do, even though they're your ideal client, they're not looking for what you do when they're on Facebook. So you have to be a little more cautious about how you're doing paid. Um, I'll just give a real quick example of what we're seeing work. Mm -hmm. We're posting educational type videos for, um, you know, like how, I'll give an example of like plumbing, right? Like, you know, how to know if your hot water heater is about to break. So it's an educational video from the owner of the company, and he just talks about things that you should know. We put that ad in front of their ideal client, so if we know their ideal client is a 45-year-old female in a household of over 150,000 with two children, great, we can target that in that exact area. Well, so now she sees this, and then we follow it up with maybe another educational video, and then we take that data from people that actually watched, let's call it 10 seconds or more, um, of that video and then we re start retargeting them with some form of an ad like hey $250 off of a hot water heater so when you do paid through social because it is very it, it does work very well right now you want to make sure that you think about it a little bit more long term and not just show hey you know $250 off this product you get all excited because you're like oh man I can target my exact ideal client but they don't really care they're not there to buy your product they're there to see what their friends are up to. So, well, and what, one of the powerful things that, you know, I still haven't gotten good at this, Stephen, I'm working on is the retargeting part because, you know, what, what's so valuable on, you know, Facebook ads is our ability to identify people who are not only our ideal clients, but have at least a predisposition to what we're talking about and then to commit, continue to communicate with them. Yep. And you know, the other piece, and I'll, try to not get too technical with it, but sticking with the Facebook ad stuff, you know, you can upload custom audiences. So if you have, I don't know, 
a, a database of let's say 5,000 people that you've talked to or 10,000 clients that you've worked with over the last 15 years and you have some basic information on them, phone number, first name, last name, um, email address, you can upload that into Facebook and it'll match those uh, contacts with their Facebook profile. So, you know, we match generally around 60% of a lot of our lists. And so now you can show content to somebody that already has had some form of an interaction with you and, and continue to target that down um, even more specific. So, I mean, that's an amazing tool that you can use through Facebook. And it's so cheap, right? I mean, everybody that's, should just be doing that no matter what. <laughs> well, and, and what, the, you know, in today's world, you know, we got so much noise out there, the multiple modalities that we're using to really be at the right time when somebody needs our service or wants our service, we're there. It's just so valuable. Talk, talking about uh, services, uh, what I'd love to do, Stephen, is talk about, you know, as a resource, I want to pull up your website and, and actually also go to your uh, uh, free site as well. The, you know, why don't we talk about what you have at the website and then also uh, what is on your assessment? Uh, page and I'll pull that up too. Cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, we have some good resources on the website. Um, our blog is a good resource of just what's going on. Every Friday, we do something called Flip Chart Friday, where five to seven minutes, somebody from our team gives a little blurb about things that you can be doing to make sure that you're taking full advantage of your digital marketing. So, that's every Friday. We do it live on Facebook um, and then we post, you know, some blogs in between there. So that's, you know, that's one good resource. And then the free evaluator, if you're just kind of curious about where does my website show up for a couple of what you believe to be your top keywords that people search for, and you want to know a little bit about the technical side, like how fast your website loads now plays into where you rank organically with Google more than it did five years ago, this evaluator will tell you some things like that. It'll tell you if you have some toxic backlinks coming to your site, maybe you hired an SEO company five, six years ago and they were doing some you know, old school backlinking techniques. Mm -hmm. um, it'll, it'll run an evaluation of a lot of these types of things. Uh, it's just at uh, sequest.com forward slash free. And if you have questions about it, I mean, you know, John, we've been friends for a long time. I mean, if, if anybody in your group just has questions or just wants to know a little bit more about SEO or how their site's doing, I'm happy to jump on a call, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes and give them some feedback and make sure they're doing things right or make sure that uh, they've hired the right company because we get that a lot too. <laughs> no, it's invaluable and, and I really appreciate that, Stephen. And, you know, we'll have all the show notes. I'm pointing, I've got AESNation.com. Again, Accelerating Entrepreneurial Success. Uh, we, as a matter of fact, we're just updating the website, so it should be all new there. And what we're looking to do is you know, to have the success, you got to actually implement this stuff. So let me let me go with my key takeaways from uh, today because there there are a whole bunch. I mean, you know, Stan and I talked about persistence. I'm a kind of persistence and pivot. This is one of the biggest challenge for all of us as entrepreneurs is when's the right time to reinvent ourselves, refocus the company, and we don't want to give up too early but we want to really make sure we don't you know, keep on running into the wall and become all bloody and everything else. You know, we wanna provide that leadership. And I think Stephen gave some really good thoughts on it's, it's not only you know, listen to how the market's reacting today, but look at the, at the trends going forward, what's happening. Uh, focus, focus, focus in a niche, just so invaluable. And this is something in every one of our studies that we do on business owners, we've studied over 10,000 of your fellow entrepreneurs. And we see, you know, there is a high correlation once you get focused on a specific niche, the ability not only to target them from a marketing standpoint, but all the lessons learned and the solutions that Stephen was talking about. And then this organic and paid balance. I mean, you know, really, uh, it's very, very clear to the extent that you can be the expert, the best, be perceived the best of the best in your marketplace. It's great. And, you know, so many entrepreneurs are what I call hidden talent. You know, they've got this great talent, uh, but nobody knows them in their community, whether it's the local market or whether it's a vast market. 
And that doesn't count. You want to be the expert talent and the expert talent so they know you. And, and you know, ideally organic can be very cost effective, but don't neglect, as Stephen said, the paid traffic. So Stephen, this has been great. I, I really appreciate you, know, you sharing your insights and your success. And, and I want to just encourage everybody to go to the transcript, uh, the show notes, and go execute, review this, and really make sure that you're doing each of the things that Stephen's counseled us on and make a difference. I wish you the best of success. Exceptional, remarkable breakthroughs. AESNation.com.